Hello and welcome back to the Naked Marriage Podcast. We are Dave and Ashley Willis. And on this podcast, we address the truth about sex, intimacy, and lifelong love. And you guys, we are continuing in our series about the seasons of marriage. And we're gonna talk about the empty nest season or what Dave likes to refer to as naked season. Naked okay? season. Because that is that is his dream. Once that nest gets empty. It's a naked nest. Clothes are going on the floor. That's right. That's how he said naked <laughs> the na- rooms. The naked nest. Yeah, it's like That's- kids, you got to call every time before you come over. You don't know what Better you're going to find. Loud. That's right. Not- <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we dive in, we're going to share another review with you. This is from Tara Babb, and and it's, an, it's entitled So Grateful for This. And this person says, precious couple, such great information here for all things marriage. They cover so many issues that the church isn't talking about. I've learned more from this podcast about marriage than I expected, and I listen weekly. Well, I just love that. Like, I love it when you get more out of it than you were even expecting. That's awesome. And if you are getting a lot out of this podcast, we would love for you to help spread the word. And the best way you can do that is to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Yeah. And it really does mean a lot. It not only encourages us, we read those things, but it does help other people discover what you've discovered. So maybe they too will learn more than they were expecting. Right. And it can make a difference in their faith and in their marriage. And so thanks so much for helping spread the word. We love and appreciate you guys. We've got a great topic today, so let's dive in. I'm excited about today's conversation and next week, of course, when we're going to sit down with our dear friends, Sean and Lynette Reed, who are living the empty nest as new empty nesters, yes. and they're going to have some great insights for us. This is the first season we've discussed that we have not yet experienced. Right. So, of course, in the early years of marriage, we, we, under, we had marriage without kids in the home, so we get that, but it's, it's going to be totally different when now we've had kids and those kids have grown and flown. Yeah. And I'm honestly looking forward to that. I mean, I know we'll miss them in some ways, but I think if you if you build your marriage all the way through the, the journey of parenting, then once you reach that empty nest, it should be a time of celebration, mm-hmm. a time of renewal. And yet so many couples, they've focused, I think, so much on the kids that they've drifted apart through those parenting years. And then the empty nest is something that terrifies them because their whole identity has been wrapped up in parenting and they don't know who they are as husband and wife, or even sometimes as an individual without having a a kid in the home dependent on them. And so we want to talk about this season. And like all seasons of marriage, there are unique opportunities and unique challenges. Um, but this empty nest season is, uh, is going to be the longest season of right. your marriage. And so how do we make the most of it? Let me tell you, this is near and dear to my heart, not only because, I, I mean, we're like 10 years out from this. I mean, we still have young yeah. kids at home. First one's even this fall for yes, college, but, but, but we, exactly. we've got, you know, a 10 year gap between oldest and youngest. So. We do, but, but we are going to launch one, but also we have so many friends who are now empty nesters. They're like very young new empty nesters. And so some of my closest friends are, and you know, I was actually just on a walk the other day with one of my best friends and she just launched her last child and, and her and her husband are like so enjoying this. And we were just processing all this. Cause she was saying, you know, some of her friends right before they launched their last child, she said that her friend like had a job lined up because this woman had been a stay at home mom for some time. And she knew that if she didn't have something lined up to kind of put her energy towards that, it might mess with her, you know, cause this woman was like, I just need something to kind of put my energy and talents towards. And so her friend had like set up a job and now is working that job and it's worked really well for her. But my friend who I was talking to said, you know, she's been a stay at home mom for a long time. And right now in this season, her husband uh, works a busy job. And she said, you know, I feel like it's been really cool because my husband who has always worked this busy job is coming home to just me. And then we can decompress together and go on walks and work in our, our yard. They have a lot of land together and they're dreaming together. They're getting ready to go on trips. And she's like, you know, I, I see where some of my friends are getting a job, but right now I feel like my, my role is just to be with my husband. And so the reason I share this with you is I think it's going to look different for everyone. I think that there's no one size fits all. And I think what, one of the biggest things you can do as a married couple is say, you know, what, what do we want life to look like in this season that is, is going to benefit our marriage the most? Because this is a season where you can be laser focused on your marriage. It doesn't mean that you're not concerned with your kids, but it's not to the same degree. I mean, you yeah, want them, you know, he used the term grown and flown. There's a great page on Instagram, Instagram called at grown and flown, and they have wonderful information about this season in particular, but you know, that is the, the goal. And, and that, that term comes from like birds leaving the nest. And so that's our goal is 
we want them to go fly and fly on their own and soar and do all the yeah, things. Yeah, that's the win. And and it's a win. And it doesn't mean, I mean, we're there, you know, Sean and Lynette, I've heard them, and they're going to go into great detail about this in our next episode, but they use the term, you know, you, you become advisors, you know, you're, you're an advisor yeah. in this yeah. season. And I love that because we want our kids to come to us, but, but really what we need to be doing more than anything in this season is really rekindling our marriage. You know, hopefully it's still kindled. Like it's, it's got that flame going, but you can do things to make it even better. And when I was walking with my friend and she's describing all this, she was just glowing and talking about how much she is enjoying the season and, and discovering new things about her husband and how, you know, she was like, Ashley, I'm so glad that we didn't put our marriage on the back burner when we were raising our kids, because this is such an exciting season. But she said, I have friends who I love dearly, who love their spouse. I mean, it's not like they don't love their spouse, but they have maybe been hyper-focused on the kids and yeah. really lost track of each other. Yeah. And, and they're not enjoying they're, they're this season. They're going to their friends for emotional connection. Right. They're going to their kids for their like primary relationship and their identity in some ways. And then the spouse is just kind of like a like a, a distant partner in all of this, right. like helping to shuttle kids to practices and helping pay the bills. And, and, yeah. and they don't know them. Like right. they feel like they don't know them. And I want to say to you watching and listening, if that's you, if you're like, man, we did put it on the back burner. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't even know this person. What do I do now? We're not saying this to shame you or make you feel like, oh, no. like you're done. We're telling you this to level with you and say, listen, take an assessment of where you are. And if this is you and you feel like there is barely a pilot light going there, or maybe there is none, like you can't even, you're like, there's no, not even a flicker. Like it's a cold home. You know, our relationship feels very like a cold place. I don't even, I don't even really want to have a conversation that is a crucial, a crucial moment. You know, you need to recognize that, but you have a golden opportunity and the time now to invest in your relationship, to relearn each other, to rekindle that fire that you know you once had, because I think we lose track of that. But like you once had this, like you married this person for a reason. You had children with this person for a reason. You do know them. Okay. Yes. yes. But they're not the same person you married. Okay. None of us are. And so instead of dreading getting to know this person, get excited about it. Try new things. You can flip the script a little bit because you have the time now and, and you can give your marriage the focus that it needs. So, so good. What my goal is to not be like this neighbor that we have. Oh yeah. gosh. Okay. Which I think they're doing better. By I, the way. I think we're doing better. We don't know these people. They're not like our next door neighbors, but we go on walks a lot. And as we go on walks, we've noticed that several houses down, uh, there, we've got these neighbors that are clearly empty nesters. They seem to be in like early retirement. And the husband is every time I walk by, he's outside doing yes. something. Which like, I love being outside. Like so I get fiddling it. in the yard, doing something. So you would think that his yard would look like a manicured golf course with the amount of time. Cause he's out there all the time, just, just fiddling, you he's know, like picking at the grass, like, yeah, picking at the grass or doing this and that thing is his yard doesn't even look good. I mean, he's just out there, I think, because he doesn't want to be in the house. You yeah. see his wife's car's there, and he's outside all day doing something. I've seen her on occasion, like, peeking through the front door. But, yeah, Dave, Dave and we don't, again, we don't yeah, even I know don't what's know actually happening here. We just kind of it. But, yeah. But we just think, you know, like, whatever's going on there, they they don't seem to want to be together a whole lot. And I maybe, again, we're totally misreading this, maybe the guy just loves being in his yard, even though he's clearly not really working on stuff because <laughs> the yard doesn't even look good. But but I don't know. I don't mean to poke fun at the neighbors. I'm just saying, like, we want to create the kind of relationship where we, we want to be together. Like, we've right. invested so much in this friendship, this bond, this partnership, this love that that we want to keep having new adventures, that we we never run out of things to talk about, that we're continuing to grow and to explore and to learn more about each other. You cold, sweetie? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was doing here. I, he was like getting I'm pulling him. Oh, was, yeah. If you're watching, you're like, Dave's cold. Well, we are, we are, you know, dressed warm. Yeah. I'm wearing I my want to point out your EXO new gear. swag. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see like, you know, brand new EXO merchandise, the little, uh, Which little hoodie. I, it looks good on you. And we're here in the EXO studio in the marriage capital of the world, South Lake, Texas, That's where right. our brand new head, headquarters is almost complete. Cannot wait. You guys go to xobuilding.com and you can see what's going on. And, and very soon come and visit in person. And you can come to the live to studio live. recording. Yeah. 
which has not been any available in the past. We, we're going to have the setup for all that. We would love for you to come and experience it. Come have a, a coffee in our our, our Exo Press Cafe. Yes. It's going to be amazing. Thank you guys for those who've who've given because uh, this is a this is a nonprofit ministry, and it's I mean income is largely because of just the generosity of donors yes. whose lives have been impacted by the ministry. And so those who've, who've given um, sacrificially, generously to help make this building possible so that we can keep doing things to reach marriages for generations to come. Thank you guys so much. I know this is like a wild tangent from where, like we were. I was just commenting, you look cold. And I'm like, I'm sorry. And I'm not, you know, I'm getting to the age. Where <laughs> we are not that old yet. Okay. And, and also my thyroid doesn't work. And apparently Wait, this is true. That yes. can make, make you more susceptible to, you know, temperature, cold, temperature changes. and stuff. And, yes. but you know, I feel good. I'm, I'm not using that as an excuse. I'm pumped full of so many uh, medications and supplements that it's like I've overcome it, I feel like. <laughs> um, well, let's go back to being empty nesters and our neighbor. So we were talking about our right. neighbor. Yeah, the goal he, is... Honestly, maybe he's like totally happy and just loves being out, outside. He doesn't look happy, though, is, what, is well, the other is part true. of it. That so, is true. He looks disgruntled. Yeah, it's like he, he's like he doesn't want to be there. It's, it, what he, it looks like... like like a scene from Shawshank Redemption where you're in the prison yard. Oh my gosh. And you get your 30 minutes of prison yard time. And it's like, you're, you're happy to be in the yard cause it's better than the cell, but you're still in a prison yard. And so you're not that happy about it. Well, and that's, wanna, we gotta that's kind of the look on his face. To this guy and it's maybe I, again, we're totally misreading the situation. And, and, and some of this is, is just in jest, but we don't want ever your marriage to feel like a prison. We want yeah. it. It should be the freest, most joyful place. And yes, every marriage is going to go through difficult struggles and difficult seasons. Um, but overall, like you guys, this this emptiness season should be a time of celebration and joy. What I would like to talk about um, while we're on this topic is the very real and, and fairly common dynamic of when each spouse enters into the emptiness season with very different perspectives about it and expectations and expectations. Yes. So like you got one spouse, super excited, thinking they're just going to be naked or in the house all the time. And it's going to be, you know, just sex fest. Yeah. And, and they're pumped. The other spouse grieving the law, the children are gone. They don't, they, they they're not happy. They don't want to celebrate. They, they can't be cheered up. And then you've got these vastly different perspectives mm -hmm. and that can create tension. And how do you navigate that? How do you, how do you find common ground there and still give each other space to process the new season in your own individual way? I know we, we've seen this, like we've yeah. seen this dynamic. And I think what we have to remember is we're not the same people, um, you know, and it's okay. I mean, just being a man and a woman, you're different, you know? And so if one is grieving more than the other, that's not a bad thing. Just the fact that you're grieving your kids moving on doesn't mean that you have a bad marriage, you guys. I feel like I can, I can, I can tell that there's going to be parts of me that are grieving that just because it's a, it's a new season, you know? And so you're just, it's not that you're sad about moving into this new season. It's just that like, wow, life went by so fast. Yeah. And I think for some of us, that's kind of where we are. Like, I mean, I, I got really sentimental when our first child got his license and I'm sure that I'll be sentimental when he goes off to college. And, and it's just, you know, it's not that I'm not excited for him. I mean, I, I think I'm more excited than sad, but it is, it's just kind of marking the moment of like, wow, man, that, that went by faster than I was expecting. But I think when we sit in our grief, that's where it becomes a problem because then we can't move on. You know what I'm saying? We can't, it's hard for us. We just, we're just kind of stuck in the sadness and then we get mad at our spouse if they're not sad too, or vice versa. Like right. we get mad at our spouse. Like, why, you, why are you still grieving? Yeah. Why aren't, why aren't you, happy? you happy? What's wrong with you? Or why, yeah. why aren't you sad? Like, yeah. you know, you're, you're stealing, stealing my, 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 it's like when somebody's grieving and you try to cheer them up too fast, the Bible describes it as like trying to take the coat or the blanket away from somebody who's really sad, yeah. you know, cold, mm -hmm. you know, it's, we think we're helping them, but, but it's actually causing them more discomfort and distress. Right. And, and it's the Bible says, don't sing songs to a heavy heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I love that imagery. It's like, we're trying to cheer up this person when really what they need is a safe place to, to grieve and process. Right. But if somebody stays in grief too long or they're grieving in a season when they should be celebrating, um, then, then that does need to be addressed. 
you know? Right. If it's just lingering and never, because I mean, I think what I'm trying to say here is give each other the time to process however they're processing. You know, we can't kind of put, you know, be frustrated just because our spouse isn't processing it the same way we are. I think being a safe place to process those things in the way that we're going to process them is just part of marriage. But I do think we also, if we notice in our spouse that they are stuck, we have to lovingly say, like, I'm concerned because you can't seem to move past this. And that's when we might need to reach out to a counselor. You know, our exo marriage mediators here. They, they all, nearly all of them have launched kids, like nearly all of them yeah. have yeah. walked through this. And then they're also highly educated and mediating, but they would be the perfect people to talk you through this. Like they would be a great resource. And again, you can reach out to them by going to exomarriage.com slash help. But I think that it's okay if you need help, you guys, like just in, in talking to the people that we work with and the work that we do with marriages, but also our friends who are entering the season it is very common to not be on the same page in this, in how we approach the empty nest. And that doesn't mean you're doomed. I just think that, I think that this launching hits everybody a little differently. It does. And so I think reaching out for help instead of waiting and just hoping your feelings catch up, I think it's good to reach out sooner rather than later. And so if you would benefit from talking to one of our mediators, and I honestly think everybody would benefit. You don't have to be in absolute crisis, even though if you are in crisis, certainly give them a call set up. They meet with you via Skype or phone. It's very private. You know, you don't even have to leave your house. Uh, And they are so gifted, so trained, so encouraging, this team of mediators we have. Um, Reach out to them. But it doesn't have to, like I said, be a crisis. It could just be, we need some help preparing us to move yes. through, through this new season. We're in some uncharted waters. Um, we're in a place where we've never been. And we want to talk to somebody who's been here before. Right. And that's just wisdom. You know, the Bible says there's wisdom in seeking a multitude of counselors or counseling. Because when you are talking to someone who's been someplace where you have not yet been, it, it helps prepare you for that season. So to set up a call or even just to learn more about the, the resources and options available, go to xomarriage.com slash help. And you will see all the options there. Um, just schedule one phone call. It could be life changing, or at the very least, it could be really encouraging to you, just to give you some perspective to let you know, you know what, we're not in this alone. Um, we've got some tools to to move forward in a healthy way. And I promise you, whoever on the team you get, they are going to be an encouragement to you. They will be. And I think too, remember, like we've talked about before, that that your kids are still kind of looking at you and watching you and are influenced by you. And so if you are having a hard time, be careful not to put that burden on them to be the fixer. I think that sometimes, you know, us as parents are like, oh my gosh, don't go to that college so far away. I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't leave me here with your dad. You know, like there's people that will say that, like, don't me, don't leave me alone here with your father or with your siblings. You're going to, you know, we can't handle it. And I, and I get the sentiment. I get it. Cause yeah, it does yeah. change your family dynamic. Like launching each child is going to change your family dynamic. Like things are not going to look the same. Um, holidays are not going to look the same, but that doesn't mean they're going to be worse. It's just going to be different. But I think sometimes when we just hold on so tightly, we we're really, you know, we're not doing, we're doing them a disservice. We're not helping them. Like that's not fully launching them. We really have to go open-handed and say like, Lord, you know, please guide them. Please be with them. Obviously we're advising them. We're praying through it. And we know our children, like if we don't think that they, we, we think that it wouldn't be good for them to go far because of, uh, of something inside of them. That's one thing. But when we are holding them back, just because we're afraid of being in a house with just us and our spouse, big, big red flag, like that's, that's putting a burden on our child that they're not supposed to bear. Yes. They're not yeah. supposed to fix our marriage. They are not. They're not the one holding our marriage together. It's just us and God, guys. It's just us and God. And so we have to make sure that we're not putting these, these unspoken burdens on our, our kids. And sometimes we don't even see it. So like, let this be the wake up call. So, so good, guys. And this isn't the end of this conversation. We want you to tune in next Monday where we're going to sit down with our friends, Sean and Lynette Reed, who not only are really, really gifted and wise at helping people walk through these seasons of transition, but they've done it themselves and they have their own set of resources to help you do it. They have a podcast called Marriage in Transition, a great book called Marriage in Transition. So if you find yourself in the transition into empty nesting or really any major transition in marriage and, and life's full of those, 
Uh, next week's episode is going to help you so much. We love our friends, the Reeds, and they've uh, they've always got so much wisdom to share with us. But thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. Don't forget the midweek episode coming on Wednesday. Uh, those are always a lot of fun as well to kind of put a little pep in the middle of your week. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.